I'm at the Mecham Auto Auction, and if you've been following along, you know I've made plenty of mistakes in my life, and I like documenting them so you hopefully don't make the same mistakes. Now, when coming to classic car auctions, it can be really difficult because most of the stuff is sold red light, which means as is, which also means you buy it, it's yours, too bad you own it, even if there's something wrong. Now, when buying at an auction like this, you can really encounter some issues such as this one right behind me, and I'm gonna dig into this story today. This is a car that one of our viewers and subscribers purchased at the Mecham Auto Auction, and unbeknownst to them, has more issues than they had hoped for. Now, they're in Michigan, we're in Florida, between the auction fees, the issues it may have, and the shipping costs, the car is not worth shipping at home. I'm gonna get into this entire story, talk about someone else's problems for once, and maybe we can come up with a solution at the very end. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I think you're gonna learn a lot about someone else's experience today. Let's get going. So part of the difficult thing about the Mecham auction is everything is sold red light. As is, it is yours. Too bad. Yesterday I got an email from a viewer who's also a dealer out of Michigan. Right away, we bumped into each other. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Maybe, nice to meet you Thanks too. for being on camera, first of all. No problem. Uh, so you kind of got yourself in a situation yeah. which I understand more than anybody. I do it to myself all the time. Yesterday, you, you bought a car. Yeah. You wanna walk me through it real quick? Well, we were sitting there and we were looking for something to try and flip or whatever. and. We didn't expect to get it, he tapped on the shoulder and says, bid on it. I said, all right, so here's my hand. And then the reserve went off and it sold. I was like, Nick, you just got yes. real. Yeah. yeah. We went out there, alternator was messed up. Outside okay. of it's beautiful. It's yeah. really just the fact, because I could fix it if I was in Michigan, but I'm so far away from tools. Yeah. And... yeah. Yesterday they probably pushed it through, right? No, it, no, it drove through. through. Oh, it, it drove, drove it, through? It, it... So what happened, the alternator light is on? Or... Yeah, hmm. I was I was in it, I was checking it out, seeing so yeah. you know, what you know could possibly be wrong with it because yeah. we have to drive it 1200 miles yeah. and uh the battery light came on said it wasn't charging nice. and service immediately mm -hmm. i was like awesome we live in michigan have to drive to michigan we just do not want it anymore so whatever you guys buy here you're planning on driving back yeah uh, we're well, shipping the mustang yeah we're driving back the bronco okay so the volvo is what you bought yesterday yeah we're looking at millions of dollars worth of cars in here <laughs> yeah. but the auction has everything you bought yeah. a what what is the car you bought 2014 volvo s60 yeah Turbo, yeah. With 160,000 miles. Yeah. It's got the inline 525 yeah. turbo. Great engine, yeah, great exactly. transmission, awesome car. Yeah. That's wild. not really what you see at the auction here, but mm. there is everything at this right. auction. Yeah. They usually put those things at the beginning of the auction, so like day right. one, get everybody kind of lubricated and mm -hmm. moving and bidding. Right. And I get caught up in the bidding too. Oh, that's cheap. I <laughs> yeah. raise my hand. And then right after, and then I go, oh no, I, yeah. I want it. it's not real. Then the fees hit. And then the fees hit, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you own it for, do you think, after fees? 44, maybe. All right. But we'll prepare to take a loss. So you reached out <laughs> yeah. to me because you don't want to, you still want to bring it back to Michigan. Yeah, and I knew you were here, and. How much is shipping? To Michigan would be 1900 oh, on top of the yeah. 44, right. so we're yeah. not, we don't want to mess with it. All right, so maybe it's something I'll be interested in and I can take it off your hands. We'll go That'd look at amazing. it later in the video and then reach back out to you. We'll go figure it out together. Thanks Thank you lot, so guys. much. Yeah, appreciate You're it. You're a blessing. This is a 2014 Volvo S6 with a T5 turbo, so five cylinder turbo, automatic, 163,000 yep. miles. This is Tyler, and both of your cards say Tyler. Yeah. That's Nick. Can you guys That's introduce Nick. yourselves one I'm more time? I'm Tyler. Tyler and I'm Nick. Okay, yeah. great. So Tyler and Nick are at the Mecham Auto Auction from Michigan, right? Yep. You flew up here from Michigan. Yep. You actually bought a couple cool cars, which we'll discuss at the very end, but you experienced a flying wheels fate <laughs> yesterday. Yes. So yesterday you were at the auction, got caught into some bidding, lubricated arms, raised your hand, yep, got, yep. got in the mood, got stuck with this. Do you guys want to walk me through what this car is and your scenario of what happened with this car? Yeah, so we were sitting by the block and we didn't really expect to get this. We were just, I don't know, we had some other cars we were looking at, went over the budget, so we were just sitting there drinking it. Not drinking just having some drinks or whatever. Hang on a second. Yeah. Were you drinking at all? No, no not alcohol. No, no, drinking just like alcohol. Waters. Okay. No, water. Because waters. I did buy a Hummer after two beers last <laughs> April and it cost uh, me a lot of money. Water, I still yeah, have yeah. that Hummer. Anyway, so this came through. We didn't really look at it too much. And we saw it was like 2,500 bucks. He tapped on the shoulder and says, bid on that. I said, all right. It's a no brainer, 2,500. Yeah, yeah, he's like, bid on it. I was like, yeah. all right, threw my arm out. They were sitting there like, why is no one else bidding on this? Reserve is off. Sold, and we look at it. Like we, could, we might have just got a good deal on that. Like yeah. at 2,500, honestly. Yeah. I'm gonna scan the VIN in a minute. 
Uh, I have a dealer app that I can use. I can scan mm -hmm. the van. It'll tell me what it's worth to me. So if I was at a dealer auction, what should I pay for this car? Right. Honestly, a 2014 Volvo? Yeah, it was. For $2,500 bucks seems like a steal. Well, we thought it was $2,500. Now, then. there are some issues. Yeah. Number yeah. one is the buyer's fees. Oh, yeah. So what was the buyer's fee on this car? Since oh. it was under 10 grand, is a 1000 1000 bucks. Mandatory fee of $1,000. Uh, so even 10%. Yeah. Which is normal would be what two hundred and fifty dollars yeah, added to your twenty five hundred, no yeah. big deal. No. But they have a minimum thousand dollar buy fee. Yeah. So you yeah. paid what fifty percent buyer fee near that, like thirty percent buyer fee, something yeah. like that, to buy this car. We did. Add a thousand dollars, so now you're at twenty now you're at thirty five hundred dollars. Taxes. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh no. So <laughs> you paid taxes on the buy fee, right? Document yeah. fees. Document fees. You paid fees. document fee. Okay, yeah. let's get into that in a second. This car. So yeah. if we walk around this car again, 2014 Volvo S60? Six, S6. 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 Yeah. So did they replace the S60 with an S6? No, it's S60. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this car is pretty desirable. This is like your mid mid size package. The S80 is too big. The S40 is too small. The S40 is kind of a throwaway car. Okay. This car is the one that everybody wants when you get in a 60. It's like a BMW 5 Series. They're really comfortable. They're really well built. They're over-engineered, I think you said earlier, right? <laughs> yeah. So they're over-engineered, but they're incredibly comfortable. So if you sit inside the seats of these cars, they're really plush. They wrap around your back. They wrap around your legs. So they were built really, really well. The problem is repairs. So we didn't even get into the repair <laughs> side yet. We talked about the price of the car. We talked about the thousand dollar bid fee, buyer mm -hmm. fee. What uh, was your dock fee? 150. Oh yeah, 150. I'm gonna just get my calculator out so we can do these numbers. So if we buy this car for twenty five hundred dollars, the final bid is actually yeah, it's three thousand. Three? It's yeah. three. Okay, so you bid three thousand dollars. Yeah. I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. I'm I'm With in this us. situation all the time. Yeah. So it's just nice to know that other people get in this same situation. Mm -hmm. Three thousand dollars. Yeah. Plus a minimum buy fee of a thousand dollars. Plus what else? The uh, taxes. How much was your sales tax? About 290, 295. 295. Yeah. Plus a dock fee. 150. 150. Yeah. So you're into this Volvo for $4,445. Yep. yep. Okay. You got a quote to ship it back to Michigan. 1900. Plus 1900. You'll be into it for $6,345. Now there's more. Yep, more. So here's the real issue. You drive it home if you could. But you can't. can't because of what? The alternator in it is gone out. So, so the yep. alternator's gone on this car. You didn't know it. No. Now, with not these so. auctions, what happens is, uh, again, everything's sold red light. It's as is. Yep. So you don't really know what you're getting. And oftentimes, the keys aren't even in the car. They are in this car. But there's, what, 4,000 cars here. There's <laughs> no way you can look at every single car. And people always pick on me for this. Craig, yeah. why didn't you look at it before? There's 4,000 cars we here. We can't. I can't look at all these cars. I bid because it was $2,500. That's why I bid. It's a no-brainer. Add everything else, then you get yourself in trouble. Have you guys opened the hood yet? Because I cannot figure yeah. this out. Now, your T5 is an inline five-cylinder turbo. This is one of Volvo's best engines ever built. The alternator is right here. So it's not terrible to replace, but I'm sure the alternator is expensive, and then you're paying yeah. a mechanic like what, what quote did we get for it? Uh, 700 for them. 700 bucks to have yeah. an alternator put in? All right, that's not unreasonable for being out of state. If you have a mechanic, yeah. obviously you're just paying for the labor, his labor plus the alternator. Did you think about maybe just paying to replace the alternator as well? Because it's going to have to be yeah, something. We th anyway. Yeah, we thought about it. Yeah. All right. Well, after we hearing more numbers, we just figured it's not worth it. Yeah. How did you know it needs an alternator? So I started it up yesterday because. So we got it, we looked it over, we started it up, it sounded fine, but we didn't keep it running for that long. So I came back out because I was just thinking about it, I couldn't just sit there and let mm -hmm. it... I just let it run, was moving it back and forth a little bit, and boom, something popped up on the screen, it was like, battery not charging, service oh, immediate. No. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. it can only be really a couple things. And, uh, I wonder if you guys, like, you can't help but think the worst in people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the lights were cleared. Yeah. Or if, like, maybe you've been bamboozled. Someone tricked you. Mm -hmm. You know, they, like, fleeced you or something. Yeah. They could have cleared the lights. They knew what was wrong. So they're like, ah, oh, run it through the auction, see what we yeah. get for it. But honestly, if they sold it for three, they had a seller's fee, too. So whatever they own it for, deduct another 10%, or maybe there's a $1,000 minimum. I'm not really sure. So I'm sure they didn't actually make any money on it. Either. Right. The only one that made money on it... <laughs> Miko. 
it, they made <laughs> yeah. a ton of money on it. You're welcome. It. So yeah, mm-hmm. congratulations to them, to everyone else kind of gets burned. Now if we get in this car right now and I start it up, you think the uh, battery light will come on? Uh, it, you gotta let it run for a minute, but yes it will. Okay, so I'm gonna let it run for a minute. Oh wow, it's all touch, yeah. push to start. This car is so nice. While we let this run, why don't we show some of your wins? Okay. Because there are wins and there are losses. I always say in these videos, you have to win more than you lose. Hopefully we can come up with a solution for that Volvo in a minute. But before we just dive into fail, 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 yeah. let's dive into your wins. Okay. So you bought two other vehicles this week. You did. One of them is this right behind me. You want to walk me through what this one is? This so, is a 1966 Ford Mustang Coupe with a 289 V8. It was a three speed manual and Oh, my, my dad just always wanted one, so he came down here and got it for him, so. I actually thought, so this, I, th- I thought it was a convertible, but it's not, no. it's just a vinyl white roof. Yeah. yeah. So you bought a 66? Yep, 66. 66, yep. red on red with white vinyl roof, 289 V8. So newer cars, obviously, you pull the latch from under the dashboard. Cars like this, the hood latches are down here. Typically, like what we just thought was it was either under the pony, right. under here, or under the bumper. There's a lever right here. If we pull this, it'll pop your hood. And then we can lift it and see the 289 V8. They did new valve covers, new air filter. What's also neat right here is your overflow bag. It still has your Fomoco uh, overflow bag, Fomoco Ford Motor Company. That's pretty neat to see right there. And this is the, you told me, this is a 289 V8. What did you say a minute ago when the camera wasn't running? Uh, so this actually, the 66 was the last year they came out with the 289, and then in 67 they switched to the 302. Nice. Yeah. Great. How's it sound? Do you mind if we hear it run? Yeah. Come on. Here we go. Give it, keep giving it the ass. Yeah. There it is. You paid? Uh, 27. 27,000 yeah. plus the buyer fee, which yeah. we talked about should be like 2,700. Yep. Yeah. Plus yeah. sales tax. Uh, yeah, no, because we're shipping it to Michigan. So we paid oh, a sales nice. tax in Michigan. Nice. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. Great. And then what's it cost to ship it? Another 1,000 or 1,500? Michigan is 1,900. 1,900 per yeah. car. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do you think, like, based on values, you think you did pretty well on it? I yes. think we did okay on it. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they don't make Watch any more it. of them, so no. it's pretty cool to and see. We watched a couple others go through today, and one of them was 34 or something. Nice. So, yeah, we did pretty good and on it. And to get it in a V8 is pretty pretty great yeah. compared to that six cylinder, the straight six. Manual. I always love the horn on these. So they did have a rim blow horn on a lot of these cars, okay. which is right on the steering wheel, so you could actually <laughs> squeeze the steering wheel, and that was your horn That's on awesome. the rim. Yeah. These ones are on, are on the, uh, what do you call the centerpiece right here? I don't even know. <laughs> what do you call the center of the <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell column? us what they're called. Yeah, yeah. on the steering yeah. column, whatever. Yeah. Factory three-speed? Yep. And I love the factory air. Those vents are gigantic on the oh, inside. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. This is a really, really neat car. Congrats on this one. Thank oh, those so doors much. shut so well. A real car guy would appreciate that. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Car yeah, guys know what that's like when doors <laughs> shut that well. Now, 64 and a half is when this Mustang came out, this generation, the first year of the Pony. Mm-hmm. 64 and a half, 65, 66. The way you can tell it's a 66, 64 to 66, are these taillights right here. Yeah. Easy indicator, 67. 67 also had a slightly different front end. 67, the taillights were concave, so, and they were a little bit bigger in size, so you're getting these taillights in the rear from 64. Cool car, cool purchase, congratulations. Awesome. So Thanks. one win. One win. There yeah. is two though. Can we go to the second win? Yeah, yes. just Great. over here. Let's go over that way. We were talking about Meekum fails a little while ago. This is what this whole video is about. <laughs> car probably sold for $25,000 and now it's getting towed back to its parking spot. So it's pretty Great. funny to see like, you can uh, spend 25, 30 grand the, uh, and the car still has to get towed all the way back to its spot. So I know the idea of this video was about fails, but it's not all fails. There's really, really nice cars at this auction, like vehicles you can't just go buy anywhere. And that's why a lot of people come here. They come here for the really specific 
niche cars, they're a lot of fun. The Chrome Hummer's pretty cool. Yeah. You bought something even cooler, yeah. which is this right here. What is this vehicle? This is a 2024 uh, Ford Bronco Everglade R. Um, we didn't even expect to buy it, to be honest, coming here. But I saw across the block and I called my parents and we were looking for one. And it was at the bid goes on. I went and I put in an offer and they accepted it. So now it's ours. We weren't expecting it at all. So. The color's amazing. Yeah. Now I know what a Raptor R is. Do you know what an Everglade R is? I honestly don't. Okay. So, so this was bought for your father? Yeah. Is that right? Yep. So your father wanted it. Yep. So it looks like it's on, if we take a dive down here, 37 inch tires on 17 inch wheels. Now a lot of the Raptor wheels are 17 inch wheels. Okay. You want more sidewall, less rim if you're doing off-roading. Like mm -hmm. I would have assumed, if you actually, perfect example, if you look at the Hummer, which was built to be an off-road vehicle, I bet these are 17s as well, yeah. So you're getting gotcha. giant sidewall, smaller wheel versus like when you see those big rims, small sidewall, you're more likely to get a flat tire or a blowout. Gotcha. These get more traction on the tread and the sidewall. Now I think this car still has a six cylinder in it. Uh, yeah, I know the it Raptor R may have a V8 option. Yeah. This is, is this an EcoBoost? It is, yeah. Okay, so it's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. It says it's enhanced with a Sasquatch package. Everglades equipped with the R package, nearly four inches taller than the standard Everglades. Five, five upgraded 17 inch beadlock capable wheels, five upgraded 37 inch Kenda Kevlar RT tires. You get a graphics package, an LED lighting package, turbocharged and intercooled 2.3 liter, which is 300 horsepower. Yeah. So I think they come with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost option, which was like your, your um, Raptors, the Ford Raptors come with right. that engine. This one has a 2.3 liter, 300 horsepower, EcoBoost four cylinder engine. So 10 speed automatic, you're gonna get significantly better fuel economy all the way back to Michigan. Four wheel drive with two speed transfer cache, 470 front and rear locking differentials. So for off road, this is a pretty good off road package. 10,000 pound worn winch. Does it have a winch on the front? Yeah. Oh, nice. And then 12 inch infotainment screen. So on the inside, it's cloth. It's leather made to look like a cloth combo with your gotcha. leather surround, so it's full leather, which is really cool. Leather wrapped steering wheel. You have your oh shit handles here and on the <laughs> right. other side as well. Your removable rooftop and then your auxiliary switch is here so you can add your auxiliary lights or your winch cam power, whatever you want power yeah. for up there. Did you know these things about it already? No, no? that's what's news to me. This folds back halfway so you don't have to remove the entire roof. Oh, if you want to just do quick, quick convertible driving, I think mm -hmm. you can flip that back. If I'm wrong, Tell me in the comments and then we'll both find out, but I'm pretty yeah. sure you can flip it halfway. And then obviously remove your three piece windows, take your entire top down or off. The other thing you're getting as well, wider fender flares. So if you yep. look at your base model Broncos, the fender flares are basically little lips. What gotcha. you get with your Raptor R are these same fender flares, which is what you're getting on your Everglade R. So you're getting a really, really cool uh, optioned Bronco. Are you, are you happy with your purchase on this? Yeah, thing? I love it. I'm yeah. glad we pulled the trigger on it, honestly. It's a brand new truck. Yeah, What's it's not got to love about 240 it? miles on it. That's so, incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. So somebody bought it. They probably waited a long time to get this, put their name in line, got it, and then brought it here. Yeah. And you skipped the line, essentially. Yeah. Do you feel like you got a great deal on it? Fair deal? How do you I think, think it was did? fair. We mm -hmm. paid 62 for it. Yeah, so. And that's after fees? No, that was before fees. So, so it, we here, overpaid a little bit. Tell I, me about this then. This says sold a oh, high bid 57,000 yeah and it went to the bid goes on so some yeah. of our videos we talked about how cars aren't selling mm -hmm. and then it goes to the bid goes on what is how did you end up buying this so we were in the lounge and I saw across the block and I couldn't bid on it and I saw the bid goes on so I explained it to my parents what the bid goes on is and they're like what was a high bid I said 57 want to put it off for 62 they said yeah and it was, it was really simple, honestly. Go up yeah. there, the, the guy did it all. Just say your number. So I actually have sold cars and the bid goes on. This is actually a pretty good plug for Meekum. I had a Skyline, a Corvette, a WRX, and I forget what the fourth car was, a Mustang. The Mustang yeah. sold, the Corvette sold, the WRX did not sell. Okay. And I got a call later, or it was a Corvette, whatever. I got a call days later, I went home. Meekum mm -hmm. lists all their cars on their website. They follow up with all the bidders, all the buyers that were interested in your vehicle. 
and they reach out and say, hey, you want, you want this vehicle? What if we can cut the fee? What if we can renegotiate with the seller? Would you be interested? That's bid goes on. Mm -hmm. You actually streamlined that even more. You went right in after right. the sale and bought it right from Yeah, them. we didn't want to wait. We wanted to make sure we could get, get it. it. Yeah, get, get it before anyone it. else could, yeah. So a lot of cars will say sold, or it will say the bid goes on. This one, high bid 57,000, which helps. So if I'm here and I'm interested in this, I can look at it and go, all right, I know what the high bid was. You're here, I'm here, here's what the bid was. Why yeah. don't we meet right in the middle or something? And their reserve was 69,000. Yeah. They knocked seven off of it for us, so. Wow. Yeah. Right. You know helps. what I just realized? Mm -hmm. That Volvo that yeah. has a, a bad alternator mm -hmm. is still running. Oh, we gotta yeah, head we should probably go We back. gotta go yeah. over there. <laughs> cool, bye, congratulations. Thank Let's go check so out much. this Volvo. Yeah. So these two guys came out from uh, Michigan, I think, and they called me because they're viewers. So thank you if you guys are watching this video. They were embarrassed that they bought the Volvo because the fees were so high. There was a $1,000 minimum fee plus the processing fee and the tags and the sales tax plus the shipping plus the cost of repair. It wasn't worth it for them. So in this video right here, we're discussing exactly that. Uh, it stinks. It's a terrible situation they got themselves into, but they watch this channel. And they know I do the same thing. And part of the process is learning. Like I've learned by mistake so many times. I'm talking about price right here with them. Now the value on this, I can't, I know what it's worth. I know what I can sell it for. And if I run it through the auction, I know what I'm going to get for it. We shook hands at $2,200. I wanted two, they wanted 25. We shook hands at 22. I'm writing a check for them on the spot for it. The way I did it, I gave them half in advance and then I'll give them half when I get the title because they haven't got the title yet from the state. So Mecham has to send the title to their state. Their state has to process the title and then they send me the title. Now in order to like protect myself, I mean, I kind of went on a limb and wrote them a 50% check. They seem like good guys. They seem trustworthy. And to be quite honest with you, uh, I don't think they're going to burn me. So I covered my butt. When I get the title, I'll mail them a check. It kind of takes trust on both sides. I'm trusting that they'll send me the title. They're trusting that I will send them the difference. So here's what I'm thinking about that Volvo. It's a cheap car. Cheap cars are what's selling right now. If I can help those guys out by buying it for what I'd buy it for at an auction, then good. They get out of it. it doesn't really, I, I know I'm not going to lose at the price I'm at. The stipulation was that car had to be out today. So I got it out of the auction. I called the, the tra transporters that were at the auction. Hey, look at Porsche Taycan, my favorite car. You know I love electric vehicles. You know I hate electric vehicles. Love that car. I asked the local transporter, because there are transporters on site, if they could get it to my local dealer auction. Hey, Ferrari 355 GTS. Uh, if they could get it to my local dealer auction. They have a standard price starting at $800. So it was $800 to go from Kissimmee to Orlando, literally next town over. So I just Googled a bunch of like tow truck companies, called the tow truck company, $150. So they did, $150. Bucks. So now I'm into it for, I think I paid $22 plus $150, $2,300 to get it here, $2,350 to get it here. I'm gonna run it through here. I know that I should get pretty much what I have into it. Worst case, I break even. And then I got a video out of it. I helped some people out. All is good. Now I'm going to tell you what happened with the Volvo and in the video, but I want to show you some kind of cool things about Florida. This is why I moved to Florida. Take on turbo. You can tell by the wheels. I love this car is so much fun and so cool looking, but right next to it, Volkswagen Cabriolet. So nice to see these things still alive. One of the reasons I moved to Florida is because there's no rust. But what I really wanted to look at was this 355. Where's the door handle? Is it under here? How do you open these? Yep, there we go. Oh, and a gated six-speed. Oh, it is so cool to see this car so clean like this. How many miles are on this? It's a 1998 Ferrari 355. It looks a heck of a lot older than that. Blue on red combo is a weird combo. We have another take on right here. I want to look at one more, and then I'm going to tell you the ending of how this Volvo video ended up. Maybach or Maybach? Maybach? How do you say this? I say it wrong in every video. 2023 Mercedes GLS 600 W4 Abach. What smells like the devil's lettuce in here? What makes this worth what it's worth? Can somebody please tell me why this is worth so much more than just a regular GLS 550 or something? Is it the paint? Is it the rims? Is it the body kit? What is it? Well, I said I'm gonna tell you how it ended. Let's tell you how it ended. This is how the Volvo ended. 
I ended up running it through this auction. Oh, jeez, I'm pro. I ended up running it through this auction. I ran it through three times. So it cost me $150 to get it to the auction. Easiest way to sell it, run it through a dealer auction. I don't have the means to sell retail in Florida yet. So as you can see, time has changed. So there is a lapsed time. It took me a little while to get it here. It ran three weeks. So I know in the last scene, I'm like, oh, today. That wasn't true. It wasn't today. It was a lot has gone by. I ran it through three weeks in a row. 1,700, 1,200, 800. On the fourth week, I got a call from a dealer in Daytona. Wow, it is so hot in Florida. I got a call from a dealer in Daytona saying, hey, I want to buy it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll sell it to you, whatever. He ended up buying it for 2,500. After all the auction fees that I paid them, that's what I owned it for. So 2350 plus auction fees three weeks in a row was $2,500. I ended up wholesaling it to another dealer for $2,500. That is my break even. So was it worth it to me? I helped out a couple kids. I was spot on on my numbers. That's, that's good. I, at least I know my job. Number three, I kind of would have felt bad if I had made a profit. Like I felt like it would have taken advantage of those kids. So let somebody else deal with it. I don't have a facility to fix it yet. I would have had to ship it down to West Palm instead of Orlando. It would have cost me more money, but the dealer that has it now is listing it for, I think, $6,000 repaired, cleaned, detailed. So they're going to make money on it. I didn't. Neither did the other guys. The other guys lost money. It was a pleasure to meet both of them. They bought a Raptor and a Mustang that they did well on. They bought the Volvo that they didn't do well on. They lost money. I broke even. I got to make more content, which I really, really thoroughly enjoy doing. Learned a little bit. They learned a little bit. Someone else made some money. But the point was how easily you can get burned. You don't realize by raising your hand how quickly you can get burned. And it's constantly a learning lesson. Like I'm always learning even to this day. I still learn. I just bought a piece of property that I thought had a house on it at auction. Turned out there's no house. I bought a piece of land. Thought I was buying the house next to it. Huge, still make mistakes, even in my 40s. It's ridiculous. I'm constantly learning, constantly evolving, constantly changing, hopefully constantly growing. That's the idea. So that's the end of this video. I'm in Florida now. It's a real thing. I'm establishing my business, going to get my dealer's license, going to find a location. We're going to be back in business and up and running. So we'll have like back to basics type videos coming very, very soon. If you like this content, please subscribe. I'm not a kid anymore. So I'm going to still start from ground up in our series coming up. But the end goal was to buy and sell stuff I like. That's why I moved to Florida. So I know a lot of people want to see me buy Ford Explorers. I'm not a kid. So if you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe down below and just like this video in general because it helps us uh, with the algorithm. Algorithm.